everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our fun 6x6 series using the fabulous concept created by Allison Davis for Scrapbook Generation. And everything that you would need for Allison Davis and Scrapbook Generations is listed below. Hit that show more button, expand that description box and you'll see a lot of more information. So today we're going to continue playing with the concept that Allison has been teaching us about taking our six by six paper pads and playing with strips. And that's what we're going to do. Yes. And so I have uh, papers lined up in a row here. I have my notes lined up in a row. I have a lot to show. So let's, uh, let's get cracking. And so of course you can see I'm going to be playing in my layout with Echo Park, A Dog's Tail. We're going to play with some theme today, some themed product, and of course, a little girl and her puppy. <laughs> yeah, a stuffed puppy. <laughs> That's all she ever got was a stuffed puppy. Oh well, too cute, too fun. Okay, so in Allison's class, you know, uh, again, this count is below. Grab that while you can. And so the third concept is taking that six by six piece of paper, whether it's from a pad or a scrap pile or just a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And then of course you cut that in half and you get two strips. And if it's double sided, that is a bonus. Okay. And then of course in the last layout, we played with that and I did two and a half by six strips. And so I just uh, cut some down into two and a half by six to fit my layout. And then of course we also showed that you're taking these strips and then you can give them treatment as in play with banners. Okay. So we gave them notches and we call them banners, flags, pennants, fishtail, whatever you call it, just call it lovely. So we played with that in the last layout and we're going to continue to play with that because as this concept is showing, whether you're using it as is or in squares or in strips, you can keep going smaller, you can keep going bigger, and we're going to expand on that today. And then, of course, I want to say one more thing because I will probably forget. Whatever we're showing, as is, the squares, strips, remember, you can do painting. You can uh, do some inking. You can use washi tape to cover up any and all seams. And then, of course, you can use these kind of distress distress inks, chalk inks, paint, you can use distress tools, you can sand, you can rip, you can tear, you can do anything. Whatever you like to do as far as treatment, and then also to your mixed media gals, don't forget all of those treatments, you can uh, add on top of this to make it your own. Now, I don't do a lot with a liquid media because it gets a little too messy, and for me, my style is always the paper. It will always go back to paper. That's probably why I own more paper than I do shoes. I kid you not. <laughs> that will always be the case. So playing with these strips, we cut them down even more where you could have a 3 by 6 a 2 by 6 and a 1 by 6 Okay, we showed that. Okay, there's those sizes. But now we're going to play even smaller and have some fun. So uh, let me put this all to the side. <laughs> Let's, let's see how fast I get off the rails today because even as many notes as I do before I turn on the camera, when inspiration hits, inspiration hits and you run with it, you just have fun with it. Okay, so let's get some photos and we're going to play with a one page and then of course, you know, whatever I show, you can always expand to a two page. So playing with these strips in the simple form, okay, let's get... A four by six photo. Oh, what's another cute one? Oh, yes, Beagle. Yes, Beagle, Beagle. Okay, here we are in North Carolina. Okay. So we have two four by six photos, and you can, well, we could just do it this way. <laughs> Let's do four. Now, this is just a single page, but you know you can expand it to a two page. And then you're going to take these strips, and we're going to play with a two by six. So what do you do? I mean, oh my gracious, gravy. <laughs> You just play with them in substitution of those squares because now we're playing with strips. So you see the concept as is, squares, now we're playing with strips. And so then, of course, that you could expand that. You could get eight four by 6 photos very quickly just using 2 by 6 And so then you could do this, and then you could do another row of 2 by 6 Let's get some other pattern in here. So that's another way. And, of course, this is just playing. So as I said in another video before you break into your six by six or those papers that we spend 99 cents a sheet get out your scrap pile and play with these and then snap photos of what you like you may want to play with so right here is very simple a two by six instead of doing one row i did two rows but you could do two photos because you know these two by six strips two of them together what does that equal 
that equals a four by six photo. Mm, yeah, so there you go. You could do three. <laughs> so don't forget, you know, we're absolutely just playing with measurements at this point. Absolutely playing with that six inches. And so then with that, you're using those four pieces of two by six. That's all that is. But you can get four patterns in there. And tell me that's not quick. Tell me you can't use scraps. Yes, you can. And then, of course, what's the bonus? You can rotate that. <laughs> just It just never gets old. It doesn't matter how many times I rotate that, it doesn't get old. And, of course, you can put your photos at the top, photos at the bottom. And then you could even, if you wanted to, now see, this is what I'm saying. I didn't even plan for this. You could even put your two by six in the middle, and you could really get whimsical with that design okay that's just plain two by six okay so let's play with the two by six even a little bit more and again whatever i show on the left you know you would double it if you're a double page gal so let's play with these strips again now this is just two by six we're going to be playing with one by six too so hold on this may be a little bit longer video but we're going to play okay because i love this class <laughs> i just really do okay so what we're going to do is we're going to have two four by six photos here and let's, um, and of course, uh, you know, my little girl stuffed animal Beagle, his name was Beagle. Yes, all the life. And still today, his name is still Beagle. And he still holds a special space in our life. And uh, he has now taken up residence with my little one. <laughs> yes, it's just amazing how one little stuffed animal will just, just be part of your life forever. So again, playing with these two by six. So what we're going to do is we are not going to uh, be so linear. We're going to play with these. So what we're going to do is we're going to overlap. We're going to give them a different, a different angle for them. Now, I like playing with odd number of papers in something like this, but you don't have to. You can do, I'm going to show you an option where you don't have to. Let me give you, a, let's play with another pink one here. So here's two before six photos. If you want to do a quick one page. Right there is two by six, again, using a six by six paper pad, using scraps, using whatever you want, and then just simply overlapping two photos, or you could keep them linear, whatever you wanted to do. And there's two by six, and there's five of them. Very quick, very fun. Okay, now let's do another one. Okay, so let's do this here. I want to show something. Because, you know, we have another series playing with paper, and it's called our go-to designs. And I will have the link below for that playlist, and it is some really long videos just playing with paper. The same thing we're doing here. And so I showed in the first go-to design, we played with a happy horizontal. And a happy horizontal is simply a 6 by 12 piece of paper at the top or the bottom, left or right, can't get any easier than a six by 12 piece of paper. So really, what is a six by 12? It's two six by six side by side. And then if you cut that down even more, what do you get? Two by six, you get six, two by six. And then what can you do? Let's do this wide one. So let's do this. I told you we're just gonna play today. And then you would take your washi and right there is that concept of happy horizontal using the concept of using your six by six papers in strips right there because that is a six by six. In fact, I have that right there. Right there's a six by six. Now there's a six by six in strips. How fun is that? Absolutely. And so, you know, if we put six of those at the top, what is that? That's the happy horizontal now just broken down into smaller segments. That is why I love this class. So you can't, you can't do this wrong. You can't. And then of course you can come down here and you could get three, uh, verticals really quick and there you go you could even put some more washi where where did I do with that other washi wherever I see a seam with paper I just automatically my brain goes to washi look at that very pretty and very quick and that is probably the best aspect of this class using what you already have six by six paper pads or smaller papers and then also too this is quick and doable absolutely okay so now let's go to another fun way to play uh, we haven't even hit one by six yet <laughs> no we just still play with two by six okay let's just keep on going so let's play, and what we're going to do, now that was the happy horizontal, right? This is just expanding more on what we've already talked about in our go-to designs. So now what we're going to do is we are going to play with the band, and we're going to take those same 2 by 6 papers, and what are we going to do? Oh, yes, come to Mama, sing it, bring the gravy, because right now we did a band. 
in those two by six. And now you could absolutely get six different patterns. If pattern paper is, is hard for you, you can get six different patterns. And then what do you do? You just play with photos. If you have four by six or you have wallets, whatever you want to do, you can play with your photos. And of course, you know, break out that washi, break out those edge punches, break out those border stickers and just have fun. That is the band design, but now breaking it down into that two by six strips. Mm, too fun. And then what else can you do with that? That band is going vertically, but that doesn't mean you can't take the band and do it vertical, or I'm sorry, horizontal, and you can do a two page that same way. And then of course you could sprinkle photos up here at the top. I don't even have too many wallets, or I would show that. I do have a small one here. I thought I did. Somewhere I did. Say if you had a bunch of wallets, you could put a couple wallets down here, a couple wallets over here on the top left, and you could go with that, and you could make your wallets go in a little bit of a wave doing that uh, horizontal band like that with a 2x6. That is really, really fun. Okay, so now let me go to my notes. Now, that was 2x6. So let's do a visual, and let's go around the playground one more time, but now we're going to play with 1x6. So do you truly, truly see, I hope by video number seven, you can truly see what I mean, that this is not just a class, this is a concept. Yes, I got to show you something. Let's just take a break. I want to show you something. Look what I have waiting over here to my left to play with. Is this just not cute factor? Look at all these puppies here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to play with these puppies. Just have to, just have to. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we are again going to do this four by six. Okay, now... I don't want to show two page layouts because you can just see whatever I do, you duplicate because I don't want to make this video too long, but you can, if you're a two page gal, just do the same on the left, same as the right, or you can do one on the left and rotate and do something opposite on the right. So again, here we are going to take these two by six and we're going to break them down even more. And now what are we going to do? Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use one by six. So now there's four patterns. But if I was to combine those two together, these two at the top, what does that equal? A two by six. So we're just breaking that down even more. You could come up here and put uh, a two by six. And then you could down here put two one by six. Now that's combining Allison's concept. And you may see that in video number eight tomorrow. So hang on for that more fun ahead. So again, these one by six, everything I just showed with a two by six you can do, now you're gonna get twice the amount of pattern paper. Oh, that never gets old. Okay, so we're gonna do that, and then you could keep playing with these strips. There's a one by six there. What do we have? Oh, we have some orange here. I think I may be running out of strips already. <laughs> Let's just play with that. Okay, so then you can keep playing with these one by six. Again, great use of scraps. And then let's just play with a double. Why not? Let's just do that real quick. And I wanna show you something different. So for double page gals, whatever you do on the left, you do not always have to do the same thing on the right. You do not. And if you have Allison's class, you can definitely see that. So let's play with more. We have two four by six here on the left, and we could put four four by six here. We have three pieces of one by six on the left, but on the right, what could we do? We could just finish it off by with one one by six. So whatever you do on the left per double page gallows, you don't have to do the same thing on the right all the time. And then remember, <laughs> okay, let me just keep on playing here. Okay, I'll finish up here. So these four by six photos on the right, I now added another row of these one by six. But then guess what I can do? I can now rotate this. I could have my one by six going in horizontal. On the right, I could have my one by six going vertical, and then I could have horizontal photos here, or I could have vertical photos there. You could come here with a great big title and journal and do a, uh, you know some visual triangles or just a couple clusters. That is how quick a one, uh, you know, two page can be done with these one by six. It just never ends. Okay, so now what else we're going to do? Let's do Let's do the happy horizontal in a one by six. We're just playing. I can't wait to scrapbook these photos. <laughs> I can't. Okay. So you know that six by 12, the happy horizontal. So what would you do? How many of these would you use? Okay, right there. There's a one by six, a one by six, a one by six. So you're gonna use six of these for that happy horizontal, okay? 
And then, of course, you would just separate your papers. Uh, let's see, we got an orange here. We got a pink here. We got an orange here. And another pink there. Okay, so right there is that happy horizontal. That's 6 by 12, because right there, there's a 6 by 6. There's a 6 by 6, all broken down into 1 by 6. And then you break out that washi, and there's that happy horizontal that we're talking about all the time here at RTS. You know how I love my happy horizontal. So again, I could get six different patterns in that half of that 6 by 12 happy horizontal. That is why I love this concept because you can take it and you can use one six by six with one pattern or you can play with a lot of pattern. It's really your style and what you like. Okay. All so right. So using that one by six concept, you could absolutely get 12 different patterns right there alone. Just 12. <laughs> six here and six here and then of course you know as we showed in another video what you could do is you could simply wallpaper your entire 12 by 12 you really really could you could just keep on going and so then if you wanted to <laughs> you could get 24 different patterns with this one by six three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve plus twelve that's 24 patterns on a piece of 12 by 12 if you wanted to do that one by six how fun is that that's just another way to take this concept okay so now let's play again with the one by six and as i showed earlier i mean i just love playing with pattern paper i could sit here all day give me a cup of tea I'm good as gold. So then what you do is take that one by six and then you would just layer them on top of one another in whatever arrangement you want. You could be absolutely very linear. Give yourself a gully. You could even bring them all to one, you know, keep them flush to one side and give yourself a gully. Or you can, what you could do is be a little bit random. This goes quicker when you're adhering. Just break out your T-square, get them lined up. And you could overlay or overlap them and layer them just like that. And I like doing an odd number. So how many we got? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Now that was a very fast way to do that. And then of course take a couple four by six photos, bring them over here, and you could absolutely mat them if you wanted. And you could put your title up here, journaling, a visual triangle, and that is quick. Again, a great use of scraps. Okay, so now with that, I want to show one more thing. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to get into even smaller strips. Fun, fun. Is that what you can do is, I just lost my train of thought. Give me a minute. <laughs> Give me a minute. Oh, yes. What did I want to show? Let's break out the two by six again. And then I will tell you, once you get playing with something like this, this concept, not just the class, the concept, and then you look at any size paper in a different way. Absolutely. So let's just do something very simple like this, what we just did. And we're going to play and play and play and play. And I love pattern paper, so this never gets old. And how many got three, four, five, six? Let's do one more. Okay. So that's the two by six. So now what we can do. And we'll just put a couple photos here for something as a reference. So then what you can do is then you can start playing with your one by six. And now you can start mixing and matching sizes. One by six, two by six, three by six, a half by six. Give some a fishtail or a notch using a hexagon punch or scissors. And then trimming that out. And then I had some here. See here, some with a banner that little notch you could give some a notch you could distress you could ink you could paint oh you could just keep on going to the cows come home <laughs> yes you could just keep on going having fun overlapping again great use of scraps and we talked about that in some of our other uh, go-to designs okay so now let's play with even smaller and let's round this up before this gets too long okay because i want to play and i'm going to show you what i'm going to play with today so let's play with some four by six photos. And I'm just using what I'm going to play with today, but you could use vertical or horizontal, whatever format you prefer. And isn't that something when you know your style, you even know your style when it comes to how you take your photos. I take the majority of my photos in vertical. Is that now you can keep now playing with even, there was the uh, two by six. 
There's a one by six. Now we're going to play with one by threes. Mm, yeah. <laughs> now that's what we're going to do because I want to show you a visual for a minute. Because you have this six by six and then you would divvy it up and you would take this and that would be a three by three. Now we're going to take this three by three and we're going to now cut that even into smaller strips a one by three. So that three by three square we played with earlier is now three strips. Yes, it just never ends. <laughs> no, it, it truly never ends. And like I said, in Allison's class, things are talked about even more when it comes to these concepts. So grab it. Okay, so now we're going to play with one by threes and I will do this quickly. So I have some, I just love wallpapering a 12 by 12 with four by six photos. Of course, if you print the majority of your photos in four by six, you're used to playing like that. So now we're going to take a one by three. Okay. And these are all yellow. And so of course, if you have a one by three, how many patterns would I have up here at the top? That would be six because my photo is four by six. So that's six right here. And now we're going to have six strips at the bottom. So this is another way to take a piece of scrap because this really is just a three by 12 piece of paper cut into one inch strips. And then now you can do something different with that one piece of paper. You can now do one by three and then you could overlap them. And again, use all these treatments, the sanding, the inking, the standing, uh, the sanding, any of those things especially inking, inking, when you're using the same pattern, these are all yellow. And I wanted to show this because this can be an option. You can use, when you're talking to these smaller pieces of paper, you can use all the same piece of paper, just cut it up in different sizes, or you can use different patterns. It's really what your style is. And then if you do something like this, if you ink them, then they really stand out, but then you also can overlap them. And then you can also put some on foam tape. It just never ends. So that is one way. Just taking the same piece of paper and cutting them into strips and then you're just lining them up. Very, it's different. It's unexpected. Rather than this just being a 3 by 12 piece of paper, it's now taking it into smaller strips. And so then along with that, if your paper is double-sided, oh, now let's play with this. <laughs> like I said, this never gets old. Oh, look at this. Is this not simple? Now, of course, these papers don't really match my mood and feel with this little puppy. But I wanted to show. They can all be one color. If it's double-sided, flip it and alternate. And then let's go cray-cray and let's do this. Okay? Let's play with different patterns even still. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. I have some double pattern here. And I'm just putting them in whatever... Um, you know, they're, none of them's matching is what I'm saying. But this is a great use of scrap. Again, one by three. One by three. One by three. <laughs> Just keep on playing. So you could absolutely get 12 different patterns if you chose to do that. And we'll finish it up with that. That is one by three. Now, you can see if you have Allison's class, you can see that not only can you go and do these in horizontal, but then if these were vertical, then you could do them. Um, if your photos were horizontal, then you could do your strips in a vertical sense. And then I don't, yeah, I would have enough. Okay. Let's see if we can do that. You could come over here and do a two page and then you would run those one by three strips up here at the top as well. Okay. So you can do that. And then also everything I showed before that happy horizontal, that band, and then layering these strips to the side, you can do all the same thing. Now playing with these one by three, you can even go smaller than this. If you wanted to, you really, it just doesn't stop. This concept does not stop. So I will, I will stop there because otherwise I'll get, uh, this video will be too long, but we are going to be playing with one by three strips. And so what I'm going to be doing is playing with Echo Park, a dog's tail. And of course you saw my photos there. And this is why I like playing with scraps because before I start cutting into the papers, I only, ha I have a certain number of these papers and this is theme. So I really don't want to cut into anything because I don't, I don't have a lot of this. And so what I'm going to do is that I'm definitely being all theme. And so of course I'm going to be playing with all these cute little puppies here. These were buttons and all I did was use my button shank removers and I cut off the shank on the back. 
make sure you protect your eyes when you do that. And then I'm going to be playing with puppy everything. Stickers and puffy stickers and puppy uh, die cuts and some corrugated. And then I wanted to show you that sometimes when you're buying supplies, when you're buying theme, sometimes this stuff here adds up. You get $4 here, $3 here, $2 there, $3.49 there. It all adds up. So sometimes when you're looking for embellishments for theme, don't overlook papers. Because I bought these two Jelly Bean papers. And you talk about quality paper. This is in 2015 Fur Fusion Soup. <laughs> I did not buy these for the paper. I bought them for seeing the paper as embellishments because look how many embellishments of these dog houses and puppies I could get. That is the B side. No interest. And then look at all the puppies I can fussy cut here. So I saw this as 99 cents, 99 cents, and I can get a lot of embellishments versus $4.99, $3.99. You know what I'm talking about. So don't overlook paper when it comes to embellishments. Not everything we have to buy to decorate our pages has to come in a pack. You can absolutely use your paper. So I'm going to definitely be going all theme, go big or go home. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'm looking at all my notes. I think I showed everything. I think so too. Uh, so when you come back, I'm gonna be playing. And then we, I wanted to show this too. And Allison talks about this in her class too is that when you're playing with these one by three, let me get that three by three here. Okay, so I can show you a reference. When you're th playing with this three by three, you know you can go this way, and then what you can do is that next three by three, what's the reverse of that? I wanna show you. You could take those one by three because you're playing with that three by three. You can go vertical, you can go horizontal. And you'll see that if you have Allison's uh, sketch in front of you, you'll see exactly what I mean by that because that's what she showed. And she expanded more talking about that. So just because in the samples I was showing that I was taking my strips and going all one way, you can even not only mix and match your patterns, but you can also mix and match whether you go vertical or horizontal <laughs> and just keep on playing and we'll just repeat that again. So I'm going to repeat here and come over here. And then let's see, what do we do here? No, that's not right. No, where's that turquoise? So I'm just repeating. So now I'm going to repeat this block. And so we're going to go this way. No, got it wrong again. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell I'm a lefty because I'm going in the wrong direction here. And this one, and then, of course, okay. So I know, of course, if they were lined up. So there, these one by three are going vertical. These are going horizontal. And, of course, you would line them up a lot better than what I'm doing. And then these are running vertical, and these are running horizontal. You can also not only alternate your patterns, you can also alternate the direction in which the strips are going. It doesn't matter if you're playing with the three by six or the two by six or the one by six or even these one by threes, you can alternate and just keep going because right there's that three by three, there's that three by three, and then let's just finish at home. All that right there, that's a one by six. Oh, yes. This never gets old. Taking it as is, going down to the squares, now going down to the strips. Yes, absolutely. So come back and we're going to continue to play and we're going to play with some puppies and you're going to see how I do my one by three strips. Okay, hold on. All right, I am back with my finished two page layout and boy, did I ever play with those one by three strips. Yes, I did. And so my one by three strips came from this Echo Park six by six paper pad called A Dog's Tail. And whether you have a fur baby in your life or a stuffed fur baby, <laughs> or you just love little puppies, this is a cute little six by six paper pad. And you don't need the collection or all the embellishments to go with it because you can clearly see in my layout, a little bit of paper goes a long way. And so this is sometimes all you need is just a little bit of paper. And so, but first let's go into another giveaway because I love to do that. And so uh, what I have is a sense, our little fur babies jingle every time they move. <laughs> Most of the times they're collar jingles. As that I have a giveaway with Jingle All the Way, My Mind's Eye. 
I know, a little corny, but I thought it was cute. And so this is Bow Bunny Winter Getaway 6x6 six six paper pad. Beautiful colors. The floral in this is just absolutely beautiful. You can build an entire kit from that color scheme right there. And then, of course, the stamp set that goes with it is My Mind's Eye Jingle All the Way. Look at this beautiful poinsettia with this cluster and this ribbon and the font on these stamps beautiful you could do a lot with that and then also do the journaling cards that go with this so a little uh gift from me to you because you are such a gift to me absolutely so uh, be 18 be a subscriber and just love this hobby and leave a comment below open to anybody so that is the giveaway for this video love doing that in this series so let's talk about this layout that I absolutely had fun playing with and I'm going to span it out because I wanted to show something that uh, I wanted to show a couple different things and one of them was the versatility of playing with those one by three strips and then also to the seams when it comes to playing with smaller papers it doesn't always have to be washy and then also the thing that we were taught a long time ago if you've been a long time scrapbooker is that we were taught whatever you did on the left you did on the right now that's definitely an easy approach but you don't have to do it that way so you can see on the left I played with those one by three strips but over here I didn't play with them in that format so we'll talk about that so on the left I have two four by six photos in that vertical fashion and then I played with these one by three strips these are going vertical these are going horizontal vertical and horizontal so I played with the arrangement a little bit and I also played with how many patterns I played with I played with five different patterns and so to distinguish between your patterns something that Allison did and something she shows in the class is inking and so you can see that in the class inking these little one by three strips really can distinguish your one pattern from another but I don't really like that look so I don't ink but that is always an option you can even paint distress all those things you definitely can and I wanted to show something else that I did with my six by six paper pad is that I have yellow on my layout but it didn't come from my paper pad because the yellow in this paper pad it's a beautiful tone on tone gingham and someone asked me what tone on tone means it means that they're using the color yellow in different tones together so it's a, a lighter yellow uh, tone with a heavier and a medium there's three different color tones so that's a tone on a tone on a tone <laughs> gingham and so it's just the same color but just different shades that's what tone on tone means and I did not want to sacrifice this theme I don't have a lot of puppy themed papers or embellishments so I didn't want to sacrifice it so I went to my scrap folder and I just pulled out a different yellow so you don't always have to use everything in a paper pad you don't even have to use six by six paper pads to play with this class. No, you do not. And so that is where the yellow came from. It did not come from that. So you can see for this seam, I played with ribbon. And the best uh, ribbon advice I can give. And when I found this, um, when someone else had taught me this, I think it... I use ribbon a lot more now because it doesn't shift and it is score tape. I swear by this score tape and so I put the score tape on back of the ribbon and then I adhere it and so that's an easy way to do it and so then if I flip it over I also will put some on the my tails and then every once in a while I will take uh, extra washi and I'll cover up my ribbon tails and so that just prevents your ribbon from getting caught in the page protector for those of you who put your <laughs> layouts away and I'm not going there because I'm not I'm not good at that but I'm getting there and so yes yeah, score tape when you're playing with ribbon and this stuff is heavy duty strong quality not not off brand score tape and I will have the link below get the name brand don't go generic no score tape all the way and then of course play with border sticker and I'll talk about the embellishments in a minute and so then on the right I didn't play with washi I have ribbon border sticker and over here what did I do I broke out an edge punch so uh, this is by EK success and this is just a slide frame and I'll have the link below you can still get this this is heavy duty this is one heck of a punch and I didn't know this until recently or I did and I forgot that EK success and EK tools are under the American crafts umbrella I did not know that <laughs> Hmm. Or if I did, I forgot. So did you know that? That these EK, EK successes under American Crafts? I, I just didn't know that. I mean, oh well, moving on. So all I did was take that edge punch and wherever those openings were in the slide frame, 
I took those one by three strips, cut them down even more, and just used uh, that pattern paper or paper for more embellishment. And so with these individual frames, you can actually consider that a little mini photo, a little mini embellishment uh, cluster. You could put in uh, some brads, buttons, enamel dots, even put in smaller photos if you have just a cute way to play with this seam because all I did was play with four by six photos and I cut them down. So the sketch called for seven. I got 10 because I played with a few little small photos. So over here on the left, I will tell you my embellishments really they were just fun that's all i can say was just fun and i'm going to show you uh here at the end of the video how i'm going to house these embellishments when i'm done with this layout and so all i did was fussy cut some of these little puppies from that jelly bean soup paper and then i played with some of my embellishments that came in my die cuts with a view uh, ephemera pack and then for my title it says best friends which came out of the die cut pack and then best friends die cut pack and then best friends which came out of the sticker pack so sometimes when you're playing with a title and you don't know what to use look what's in the embellishment pack or the die cuts or the sticker and it doesn't hurt to repeat that so it says best friends best friends best friends because that's what they were best friends and then of course I just used one of these I'm going to call it a little three before card and then I used more of those one by three strips for my embellishments and I'm going to show what that is so when you get a die cut pack you'll find elements like this and so sometimes things like this especially multicolor, that throws me for a loop is that you have the right shape I mean this is cute but it's the wrong color so what you can do then is you can take those one by three strips and I had a bunch here and then you can use that and then just cover up and make your own embellishments with your own paper from your paper pad. And so that's what I did. If you look at this here, this has that blue doggy paper. I think it was red underneath. And this was orange underneath. And this was green underneath. So I just took those little bits and bobs of these leftovers of these one by three strips. And I made those customized to my layout. So right here, they're one by three strips. Here, they're just cut down to play with embellishments. And then on the right, I used that slide frame. And then I used them again even more. And so then I took a bigger piece of my favorite pattern paper out of that six by six paper pad and I filled this in because I did I had some empty space in my photos so this was just like the uh, rooftop of the vehicle and just empty space so I thought why not get some other pattern in and then I played with another few embellishments and it called Beagle Love which I like that because the dog is Beagle and that was what his name was so a little bit of a subtitle embellishment cluster and then over here played with this wagon because this is all about them growing up together and that's what my journaling will read and I'll show you where I'm going to put that and again more fussy cutting and then again if you look here under this you and me I took another piece of one of those one by three strips and I layered it behind this die cut piece and so I used it again and then of course more of that pattern paper for those cute little they're little were they're even more little than wallets and I just they're basically one and a half by one and a half squares of these little close-ups of the little beagle and I gave them some ribbon uh tabs is what I'm going to call that and so I'm going to show if you want to know how to do those ribbon tabs I'm going to show that if not you can skip over that and then also too you see this little black strip right here I want to show something is this is a trick that we have been doing for a long time when you pull a border sticker from this transfer paper and that's where this scallop is right here that was a sticker you sometimes are left with this skinny strip you can also use this skinny strip to cover up seams and what I did is that see what I'm saying you could use that to cover up a seam what I did was I used it as a little bit of a footer for these little one by five uh, little mini photos just to give it a little more embellishment and again to add that black and that was just basically a leftover <laughs> from this border sticker so when you have little leftovers bits and bobs see where you can incorporate I could even use this again and I could come up here, if I had a straight edge, I do. And I could come up here and I could put that little piece right there just to differentiate that. So I may do that or I could put it up here at the top. Play with that, definitely. You can play with these little strips. A little bit goes a long way. 
And let's see, what else is there? Of course, I added a little bit of more of an embellishment that says forever friends. Get it? Forever friends. Is that not cute? I thought so. Now, I also wanted to add, since I did have nine photos, the sketch called, no, I'm sorry, one, two, three. So I have 10 photos, the sketch called for seven, is that since I had seven photos, there's sometimes stickers that appear on word labels that you have a hard time using. And what would it be? It would be ones that are actually the days of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So since I had seven bigger photos, that is what I did because this little beagle puppy was with her nonstop for years. <laughs> All day, every day, uh, years. And so I put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So sometimes when you're doing review pages or you're talking about a companion or someone that's with you all the time, that's the time to break out those days of the week stickers and plop them right on your photos. How fun is that? Okay. So now let's talk about these uh, one by five little wallets and this ribbon tab. So basically in a nutshell, I just took a little piece of ribbon and the one tip I want to tell you, and I also did that same thing over here. I added a little ribbon a tab over there. Uh, what you need when you're playing with ribbon, I think there's two things as a must. And the one I already said was score tape. And the other thing is a pair of sharp scissors. Now, these are by Martha Stewart. If I had six pairs of these, I would be happy. They cut like butter. And so I really only use these for ribbon or a little bit of trimming. I don't use these for paper cutting. And so you want a pair of scissors that cut ribbon really, really well. And if you have to hide them from the rest of your family, buy gum, that's what you do. You hide them. And so then what I did to make my ribbon tails, and I'll move this just for a minute. I'll just flip this over so you can see. Is that I found the inside. This is the inside. And I took a little piece of score tape. And I'll just trim it here. And of course, use non-stick. Okay, use a different pair of scissors. And I put that to one end. Okay, just a little piece. And then a peel off the back. And again, the link will be below for score tape. You can find it in uh, different places. This is the one-fourth inch. I love one-fourth inch. And then you just bring the other end and you seal it. That's all that is. And so right there is your little ribbon tab. And then you can stick this under. You can see here, I just stuck that under that one by five little photo there. And so that's all that is. Now to adhere this to the back, I want to show that too. So what you would do again is take another piece of score tape. When you're playing with ribbon, you need score tape. And you put this on the back of a photo, piece of paper, whatever. Again, take that transfer paper off. And if you don't have a fingernail, I see that a lot of people use an X-Acto knife or a piercing tool. I've seen people also use the blade of a scissor to get that transfer off if you don't have fingernails. And then you take this and you adhere it to the back. Again, score tape is, score tape is the key. <laughs> and a sharp pair of scissors when you're playing with ribbon. And so again, you can see that you can secure that with another piece of washi, and that's what I did, just to make sure that it is not going to go anywhere, okay? And then run your uh, fingernail there or your anything just to keep that sealed, and that is not coming off. How cute is that? You could put this on the front of a card, bing, bang, boom, there you go. So a little ribbon tab, I wanted to show that. Okay, so now let's get back to what we were playing. And I think the last thing is, low journaling. Let's talk about journaling. And then Allison's work. My journaling is simply going to go over here. It's about five lines. And I'm going to do an Allison Davis trick when it comes to my journaling this time. I am going to run my journaling. It's going to be five strips. And I'm going to run them down this way. I'm just going to cut the wording apart. And it's going to be five little strips, and they're going to be different sizes. I'm going to cattywampus them. Sometimes, well, a lot of times, you'll see in Allison's work that she inks even those journaling strips. And I'm going to just type up my journaling. I'm going to make them a little cattywampus. They're not going to be linear, but that's where my journaling's going to go, even the date. Love that. Okay, so then the last thing is Allison's work. Okay, I'll let you look at that for a minute. Oh, let's talk adhesive. For my lump and bump, my puppies and my bones <laughs> that were a little uh, lump and bump, I used my super glue quick gel. And then for all my die cuts is my quick dry. And even the photo, my corners of my photos, it was my quick dry. And of course, everything else was ATG. And then as I said, 
score tape. When you're playing with ribbon, score tape. That is the key. And of course, washi, just to hold everything together securely. Okay, so then Allison's work, if you look at her layout, let's see how many photos she did. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, she did seven. So she literally, she took the sketch and she did it literally as the sketch called for. And then also look at how she did her one by threes. She, her, uh, she did them... Um, basically exactly as the sketch called and then she got her inking in on those one by three and then look how she did her journaling this time which is something a little different than what she normally does and then look where she put her stitching and then the use of this long title here that was inspired by allison's long title that she used on her layout and then also too if you look at the close-ups and someone had said on Deborah's Facebook group, which that link will be below, they said if you wanted to save some money on inking, they skipped printing out the close-ups. You could just go on your computer. That is another option, too. So consider that if you don't want to print out all the class. And one more thing about the class. If you're printing it out and you're only getting 11 or 12 pages, then there's another file for you to look at and download. Or maybe it's also another zip file. There's more than 12 pages to this class. So make sure you're grabbing them all. If you're only getting 11 or 12 pages, that's the only the sketches. Uh, Allison's work will be in another zip file. So make sure you look at all that. Uh, in her close-ups, look what she said about since her uh, strips of paper was so busy, what she did for the rest of the layout. And I would say that is a great, great tip because over here on the left, these strips can be quite busy. So the fact that I didn't use them on this side kind of helps. But then also I got to play. I mean, a little red wagon and a dog box and little puppies. Too cute. Love that. Okay, now let's talk about how am I going to corral the rest of these embellishments because, like I said, I don't have a lot of dog theme. So what am I going to do? And I'll move this up just for a minute. Is that I have all these die cuts left over, and I know leftovers is a question I get asked, so I definitely want to cover this. So I have one leftover photo. Now this extra photo, you could have actually matted that and that could have been another one down here or I could absolutely have put it there too. Oh man, oh, could I? <laughs> I Maybe I could. So there's another option. See what I'm saying? There's so much you can do with this glass. I could absolutely put that there. That's just another option. Play, play, play. All right, so I do have some of these die cut embellishments and other items. So how will I keep those corralled for future use? And then also, if I do not decide to use this photo, the date will go on the back. It'll go in my leftover tab section for my little one, and I can play with that later. So I wanted to show that this is what I have left over. I have die cuts, I have some puffies, and scraps of that 6 by 6 paper pad and these embellishments so what will I do with that now this is basically all the dog theme embellishments I have so I'm going to put these in a just a five by seven ziploc bag I will have the link below I get these from Amazon and I put a five by seven scrap piece of paper in there and so then I'm just going to put all the die cuts in there I'm not going to separate them out because this is a theme and you know when you're playing with a theme you want to play with all your theme you don't want to have to look in four different areas so lately this is what i have been doing so all of these die cuts whether they're acetate acrylic or just a piece of paper and they're going in and then i had some scraps left over from my layout they are doggy themed and they will not fit very well back into the paper pad now i did have one piece of paper that i didn't use that will go back in that's easy to keep together but these little ones no either you chuck them you put them in your scrap file or you pass them on so i'm going to stick them in with the die cuts because i would use them together and then i even took my embellishments out of this packaging and I will cut it down to size. So I cut these in half. I cut the, the puffies in half. And I will stick them all in here. And I even had a, a piece of ribbon left over. It reminds me of that little stuffed animal. So that will go in the bag as well. As well as all of these um, buttons that are doggy and bones. <laughs> so I'm going to stick them all in there. So that is that embellishment pack. And then I wanted to show one more thing as I have this jelly bean soup paper that I bought for die cuts or embellishments. And so what I did was I trimmed off the rough pieces. Get it? Rough pieces. And I will, um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those. But these I'm going to put back 
where I had them and they'll just go in with some other childlike papers because where else am I going to put them? It won't fit where I store six by six papers. So these here, I will definitely get a pair of scissors and I will do a fast cut or again, a rough cut. <laughs> get it? Rough, rough, yeah. And I will do that to these two pieces of paper and I will stick them in this embellishment pack. Now, you could indeed do that for all of these, but say that if I wanted to do a strip of this down on a, you know, if I want to do a strip of this in the future, I don't want to cut this all down. So I'm just going to cut these ones that were, you know, kind of stragglers. stragglers. I'm going to just cut them down and put them in that embellishment bag. That is just all I will do. Because if Tiffany Spalding has taught us one thing, is that uh, keep things together that you're going to use together and all of this dog theme which this is all I have I might as well keep it together so this is going to just be sealed up and put in my embellishment bin so that is my doggy embellishments and then I did have this 6 by 12 sticker sheet which that'll go with my other ones but I have been known to cut down sticker sheets as well I would just cut these down and it would fit in there but I won't do this because this is kind of newer I'll just stick it in my 6x12. So that is what I wanted to show for that. So when you are putting things away, it comes down to this. Whether you're doing a whole class or you're doing a kit or you're just putting away a collection. Put things together. Put things together that you'll use together, but then also to put it where your brain's going to tell you where you have it. That is a big key. So that is all I have for this video here in layout number seven. Now, what are we going to do in tomorrow's video? Tomorrow's video will be video number eight. It will be the last one in the series. And all I'm going to say is that there is a lot of fun coming your way. We are going to continue to play with six by six papers and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So hop in tomorrow and bring a cup of coffee. Yes, absolutely. So that's all I have for today. Come back to RTS because you never know. And I mean it. You never know what we're going to do. Bye.